Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says two minutes past ten tonight. Nearly at the same time the last three nights, and that is a pure coincidence. I don't wait until ten o'clock, it's just whenever I'm ready. I actually have a cup of tea here in front of me as well to keep the pipe sort of cleaned when I'm talking. A plethora of stuff for tomorrow. Um, busy, busy day. Lots of uh, good racing. Good racing today too. It wasn't that lucky for us in ways. Um, and looking back at it, there wasn't too many of them I wouldn't have picked again. I thought we'd get off to a good start in the first race because one I, I fancied was that room service. I think uh, if it was there, it might have won, but didn't run. Um, gambled on horse did of Burks. Um, the two that I was most disappointed, I was very disappointed with that bystander with the ride that got um, James Doyle rode him to sleep because that had beaten that horse handily the last day when uh, there was, uh, I think it was Aidan Keeley that rode it. But James Doyle made the difference there today. Um, and I was disappointed by the way the ride of Fast Raj in the last race. The Frenchman, I don't know what he was there, he didn't break any sweat anyway. Um, we had Bosch as a winner. Um, and we had Elegant Man. I was very sweet and Elegant Man uh, at the price last night. It was 6 to 1, 11 to 2. Um, and it won, won well. Good heart. It had uh, Donald Trump's beaten was by a Breeders' Cup winner. Um, and Aidan and a betting. I had a reverse forecast with the one, uh, the winner, and, and uh, James L. wasn't too busy on that. But anyway, what can we do? We'll try again tomorrow. Now, there's a. Some people don't like the flat, and some people like the jumps, so. There's a mixture of both here tomorrow, so take your pick. I have two in Haydock. I'm snuffling a bit. I was out trying to get the lawnmower going this evening. I have to mow the lawn in the morning before I head out tomorrow. So we got her going anyway. I have to get oil and such things. Um, there was a horse that done us a favour the last day, Brentford Hope. I said the last time that, uh, that she didn't get as good a ride in the previous race as it did the last time. It followed the mayor of Henderson's two runs back and he was very confident but he didn't get up there but he bounced it out the last time in front. Daryl Jacob. So I hope Paul O'Brien was watching that the last day and says we'll copy them tactics. Uh, it was 5-2 to two there earlier. His best flat form was on with cut on the ground when it was in the Ballymore Colours with uh, Richard Hughes a long time ago. It's up five pounds. So it's in form. Hopefully it'll do the business. Uh, Bus horse. There's a race here at 2.40. It's the uh, Stairs final. That astronomic view won by an outrageous amount of distance the last year, but it's a bad race and a couple of fell towards the end the walk to him. Uh, that Pecan is a 10 year old we've seen Domore Domore Bay the two reasons I'm going to show you this race now for fear uh, we we were, watched this today what was it, the 29th of January we were on I Love the Nightlife and it, um, Domore Bay was second but it stayed on and I think it, the track tomorrow will suit that it'll run on. It's out the back. In a, it's in fifth place. We we cruise up on the rail on the inside. Well, circuit. Lots of chances here for Gina responding to That's pressure Domor on the right frost and in the red cap towards the left and hasty at the back. Parisian. The one that's the dropping cash. away is Diesel Dallier. The one that's moving well is I Love the Nightlife in the black and white. Gone into fourth place over that hurdle. Doug Moore Bay is under a drive from Joe Anderson and then comes Mon Jules who just got outpaced when they quickened. I Love the Nightlife has come there very strongly. What's the inside line to Brendan Powell? Hasty Parisian still there in the two path. In the three path is Lassoo and 
and wider out it's Fagina on the home turn. I love the nightlife has come there full of running to come and now brush the front for the first time. Driven along Fagina out wide is keeping on well. The Sioux is also still in there battling and then comes back in fourth now Hasty Parisian and Doug Moore Bay is sticking on too as they head towards two out. I love the nightlife has jumped out very well and this powerful mare is now moving right away from the others. It's I love the nightlife on the run down to the 14th and final hurdle. She has a clear lead. She pops over safely and is in no danger. I love the nightlife by four legs. Doug Moore Bay is sticking on in second, but up front it's Doug Moore Bay who's, who's trying to close the gap on I love the nightlife who will hold on. I love the nightlife wins it for Joe Tiz. I think the track will suit um, Doug Moore Bay more so than that. Now, I love the nightlife. Um, It's out Sunday. That's why I said there was two reasons for showing that. It's in. Uh, the, it ran the last day, but the ground was totally against it. Didn't go on the on the heavy ground. Um, it's in the five twenty five on Sunday, in Plumpton, back where uh, it ran well before where it won. So I don't know what price it is around there, but uh, we'll have a look at that. So that's the selection. It's a six to one shot there, five to one in each way. Shot they're paying four places. Uh, we move to to Langerland. Down with the Langers, we have a five six furlongs heavy sprint tomorrow. The favourite is Ocean Quest, but Ocean Quest didn't run. It was pulled out last year uh, when it was heavy ground, and our little horse that done us a few turns in its day in England is over now new owners John Magnier and Paul Shanahan have it bought trained by Joseph O'Brien just be with Carol Burke remember when it won in Doncaster a couple of times for us uh, and in Nottingham going back uh, 2022 it relishes heavy ground it's by fast company so you'd imagine they won't be running this during the summer because it won't like the ground you'd imagine that they'd have it sort of spot on it was 4-1 to one earlier on when it opened up with 3-6-5 the, I noticed the green bookie he's hiding on us there uh, they've chalked it up at 9-4 to four, uh, and 100-30 to 30, I think was uh, Ocean Quest the bigger danger, I'd say, be, could be used in me the, for Fuzzy Stack. It won the maiden uh, first time out last year and they chucked it into uh, into a group one last May. It hasn't ran since. If we're fit, we'll relish the And the heavy ground in Cork is heavy, like, you know, it's nearly like sort of Limerick. Um, so... That's a fast response. Um, and the 255 at Cork as well. There's a horse similar profile. Scholarship. And it's his first run as well for Gerald Leary tomorrow. It's all from England. It was with Clive Cox. But if you look at it here in in uh, Newbury is the red and white of Spanish this is it here. company with Chelsea Square Pearls on trying to... to make progress doing so smoothly scholarship behind those between the two and the one Hodder and Embrace together scholarship in dark blue coming into it Rosina still there with a chance with the nosebound Pearl Door but Embrace has taken off Inside the last furlong, Embrace leading, Pearl Dor with the noseband and scholarship, the dark blue, and now Pearl Dor has swept through with James Dor to take it up. And Pearl Dor goes on by length and a half, maybe two, cosily at the end. Embrace and scholarship, very tight between those second and third. That'll go on the heavy ground as well. And it won first time out last year on soft ground in Newbury, so it goes well fresh. That was off 86 and it's off 84 tomorrow. It's an each way bet. Um, 
five to one, eleven to two there. It was six as earlier there was um three six five. That'll uh, it'll go back again in the morning. Need to bet them too. Now we go to Musselboro. Uh the three o'clock is heavy ground sprint. Seldom see heavy ground in Musselboro. And the winner of the last two years, actually, Silky Wilkie won it last year, and Zarzini won it the year before. I thought a horse with a chance carrying eight stone six with a three pound claimer for Brian Smart is Princess Corrine. It's the outsider of the lot, but it's a front runner. And it, it it's a, Musselboro is a sort of front run and track. Fine wine is pace as well, but if this lad gets out, uh, our lady gets out in front, she could be hard pegged back. Uh, if the dead each day there, and each way bet, as I think it's 10 to 1. Oh, 16 to 1, 12 to 1, yeah. Each way bet, small money. And then we have the big, uh, or the the long distance race tomorrow mile six heavy ground horse that liked this condition so tins earlier one on heavy ground for us before i thought meteor was worth an each way play at tins it's money for it now you see so the, the weather is supposed to be uh, uh one mile and a half in doncaster remember 2022 the November handicap that was 10s into 13 to 2 that day if it was farther I'd prefer it but it will go on the ground there's a few of them that won't um, so there's two more now we'll tip up to the county mead we'll go to fairy house uh, the 355 is the Ladies National. Um, horse has been a bit of money for there lately as or, or in the last hour or two is Read to Return. We've tipped this up before but it wasn't off he aired. Um, Tony could do it a few pounds. He got banned for six months today. He'll, he'll have no horses during the summer now. Uh, it caught the stewards' attention and the eye of everybody when it ran on the 18th of November in Cheltenham, the last time it ran over fences behind uh, Hascourt Clement. Um, we backed at the time it was in Fairy House on the 2nd of December. It was behind the feet of a dancer. It probably wasn't far enough for him. Um, Maxine O'Sullivan, she's a good pilot. Cheltenham winner. So I had that picked out as uh, earlier, it was nine to two. There's no harm to see that it's fancied anyway. Tony Merton's yard is in better form and one we won a race with it the other night in uh, in Dundalk or Fundalk. There's it's a good class race here, the novice handicap final. What's this one that last year? Western Walk. Mikey O'Sullivan. It's interesting that the run Ballymore or built by Ballymore fairly lively again. Um that has two wins and both were on heavy ground. And it's heavy there. So that could be it ran in the Coral Cup there. Um, and when it won in Punchestown and when it won in Limerick it was doing its best work at the end. One more at Fairy House. Tricky enough old car. It's not a great car tomorrow for the first day. Um, there's a handicap hurdle here. Risk Bell, it's at top of the market, but it's only, it won this race last year of 127, and it's 134 this year, but it has a, um, it has a five pound claimer. 
Aidan Kelly is on it. So that's back then it's only two pound higher. But it it won uh, the second December last. Uh, it won a Grade Three in Fairy House over the two mile. It won this race last year, and when it ran first in in its first run in Ireland, it was fifth to uh, Lassie Mouth in uh, December two thousand twenty two. So it acts well at the track. The ground won't be a problem. It seems, so. That's. That's all I could find there, sort of tomorrow there at, uh, at uh, our uh, fairy house. And now we move on to. Oh yes, yeah, somebody asked me had I a selection for, the Florida Derby, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, the favorite for that is uh, fierceness. That won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but it ran terrible first time out in the Holy Bull in Gulfstream. Um, and that uh, had his beat it. I don't know what happened to that there, was it not fit or what, but it was a one to four shot. She wouldn't be backing it again too quick. Um, so did it not train on or what? I thought a safer bet was uh, the Shug Magahi trained um, Conquest Warrior. I like Shug as a trainer. Um, he doesn't put the gun to their head until he has to. He brings them along nice and steady. But it, it was fairly impressive, I thought, to let him know. It was only an allowance optional claimer. But fine, big, harsh, decently bred. Excuse from Merrim, the two favorites hook up a quarter of a mile from home. Merritt working harder to hold the lead, and Conquest Warrior is already past him. Back to third, that's Nomos, together with Ragel, there's an eighth of a mile to go. Conquest Warrior is kick clear with authority. Conquest Warrior under Jockey Jose Ortiz will win and win impressively. On his road to the Florida Derby, here's Conquest Warrior. Geared down and three and a half in front. Merritt will... Gear down, he didn't gear up much to gear down. That'd be my selection in that anyway. Um, it actually was five to one a couple of days ago. So we go on to Medan and see can, what can we do. Uh, we'll, we're not going to do every race, we'll just do the turf races and Saudi Crown. That's uh, that's an even money shot there. That should win the first one because that was uh, only collared late in the Saudi Cup over a mile one uh, by the horses that's really fancied in the Dubai Cup. Uh, the 1240 a horse that we know a bit about is Tower of London. We know a lot about a lot of these horses Elder Elder of and Coltrane and Siskani Trawler Man Enemy. Uh, we we backed them at and the one for us at some point all along. Uh, Tower of London first came to our attention when he won the Down Royal Derby or Dunster Derby in Down Royal. Poised up, remember, in uh, he was five to two favourite of ninety nine. Then he was bet by Castleway. Got a bad ride from Ryan Moore that to got caught on the rail. We, he was fourth in the ledger, but the ground was against him. It went soft that to when his stable made continuous, uh, beat him, and the ground against him then in in uh, the Irish ledger. But he was back to forum the last day, in. Rhea. Oh, this is him here, right? This is enemy, and this is the horse. Uh, that finishes third in the finish. Now down, down, he gets into horrid bother more. 
now. Ryan Moore needs some luck on Tower of London, full of horse, nowhere to go. Behind these towards the inside is Big Paul Giovanotto is now being wound up. Ect has moved through to take the lead. Enemy right from the back of the pack. Giovanotto as well. Now Tower of London. Giovanotto times in. Joins enemy Tower of London's had a torrid trip. Can he put it out of the fire? Enemy Giovanotto dying on the run. Tower of London's gonna travel late. Tower of London getting to enemy. Tower of London in the final bound. Got out of jail, I think. It didn't part like Moore didn't panic, but he got up on the line. It's a seven to two shot there, um, three to one, eleven to four. He's fit. He's after having a run. The other ones are having their first run of the year. Barsiskani, um, well, Gavalasso and Enemy. He should beat them again. You would say. Uh, Coltrane probably would like a bit of cut, but some some of them ran last year in this. Uh, Well, let me see now. I thought I had this ready. Yeah, Broom won that last year, and Siscani was second. And Quick Torn was in it, and Enemy was in it, and Giovaletto. So. Siscani second to Broom. I think this is a better horse than Broom. But the ground is key to this horse and the distance. So that would be the selection. Uh, we come to the sprint. Star of Mystery won a couple of races there early. It was a bit of a disappointment the last day when uh, Frost at Dawn, a three-year-old, getting a lot of weight, went out in front. That was over five, wasn't it? Daniel won this last year. Castle Creed, an old favourite of ours, won a Breeders' Cup and won other races that we backed it. Emirati Anna was back to form the last day it won in uh, Ria. But California Spangle, this, this used to be a miler. Well, his best race was at a mile. It's a six year old now, but it started off his career as a sprinter. In fact, I think it's nearly unbeaten as a six furlongs. Uh, second and one, two, three, four, five. And it's first six starts. Five out of the six were over six furlongs and it won four of them. Developed into a group one race. It was in 2022 there to second to Golden 60 a couple of times. But it beat Golden 60 then uh, in Japan last December 12 months but it went back sprinting the last day um, back to 7 and this being back to 6 it'll be out in front now there'll be, there's a few front runners in it um, because Frost at Dawn will be out winging as well but if we look at it here over 7 that's it in the lead in the red and yellow. Wide, wider again, Lucky Swainess, and the pair of them sweep up from the back, and then came Galaxy Patch, California Spangle leads, healthy, happy, Lucky Swainess, Beauty Eternal, Lucky with you, California Spangles in front of healthy, happy, Beauty Eternal, Lucky Swainess, they still haven't got California Spangle, red line starting up the inside, Beauty Eternal, they are going to turn back time with California Sp Show great speed from the gate uh, that day. Let us see where it's drawn. It's drawn in five. It could be hard pegged back. Star of mystery. Appleby's horses aren't just exactly firing, uh, not like other years in uh, Medan. And and Sir Ur, he hadn't a winner since last October. I think he's they've pulled the plug on him altogether, have they? The horse that will like the trip staying on uh, will be Castle Creed and Dania as well, last year's winner. So if there's a breakneck speed up front, it'll suit the two closers. Uh, Pontus is a front runner as well. That'll be out and winging. So it depends what sort of a break. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pick a winner, but I could be as wrong as hell. Like you know, so we'll see. Um, 
the selection is uh, California Spangle, first time hood and tongue tie and all the modern conveniences possible. Where am I? You're in Medan. Hopefully one day. The UAE Derby. For every young is a hot favourite. Probably could do worse than Dublin that uh, the two favourites, that one and, and the other one uh, in the uh, Saudi Crown. Now we come to the the group one, the dirt. It's six to one the field in places. Hopkins is over from the States. Louis uh, Sayez writing for Bob Baffert. That was second in uh, recently. Colour up is a horse that we backed and won for us in. Uh, where was it? Um, I'm trying to think. Jebel Alley. But it's, I don't think it's up to this class. That was only a Mickey Mouse race. Well, it was a group race, listed race. They're giving it a spin, 40 to 1. Wesley Ward is a horse here, and look at the man he is above on top of his back, Mr. Spencer. And this has a chance. And I'm, I'm hoping, it's an each way play, I'm hoping that Mr. Spencer is listening in and does one for the bus tomorrow. If we look back first at um, the Breeders' Cup when we were on elite power this horse was threatening at the time he's on the rail and he gets blocked just watch his run he's on the rail in the uh, the Qatar colours and he has to come round about the house that's him there in front of Gunite, who's trying his best. Nakatomi and Elite Power is cut loose now. And Elite Power runs right by, and he's going to defend his championship. What a magnificent sprinter Elite Power is as he rolls home in the cutter racing. If it got out, it would be a lot closer of a second anyway. And then in its last run, something similar. So I presume Mr. Spencer will be looking at this and saying, look, I need to get him in the clear. This was his last run in uh, Tampa Bay Downs in uh, 10th February. Starting to move up on the outside. Caramel Chip and Nakatomi both going to need a seam as they're in behind runners. That's with just the white hat. To go and Mish hits the front. Mish, the new leader. Sibelius down the outside. Nakatomi looking for a seam with Caramel Chip right there. Mish still just in front. Sibelius trying to charge after that one. It's Mish. Sibelius lunging late. Sibelius on the outside of Mish. They drive to the wire. Sibelius getting up to repeat in the Pelican Stakes. Mish was second. Nakatomi might have got up for third. Got up for thought. He got into horror bother as well, but I cannot understand that the, 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 they didn't learn from their experience previously and bringing them up the rail both times. Medan, a big wide rail strike. They're off the handbrake, come up the middle of the track. Good lad, Jamie. You might win one for us. We forgive you then. We come to the turf mile. Well, it's nine furlongs. Uh, this was won last year by wasn't this Lord North last year? Uh, it was Lord North won it last year. Um, we have a Japanese favourite, and he's the selection. Do juice, do juice. In the Japanese Derby a couple of years ago. He's five now, isn't he? Five-year-old. Well, when he was three, who did he beat in the Japan Derby? He bet none other than Equinox, who was one of the best horses I have ever seen. He retired there after winning the Japan Cup in December. The round at that time then and it came over for the for the Prix de l'Arc but to the very soft ground. It's the top of the ground harsh. Um, but it has a great burst of speed. 
this is this is him here in action the 51 51 or 2 year kataki taki watch him on the outside here to see him look at this for a move taking off Sol Orient's well back with Iron Burrows and wider out and Ho-Ho Emmys his last title holder has he gone too fast too early he's in front but here they come the challenges to do stars on earth nothing else emerging Justin Palace is getting out but getting out late it's still title holder title holder to Deuce to Deuce goes up to Deuce and stars on earth to Deuce to Deuce and Yu Takatake wins Yali McKinnon stars on earth very tight for third, Justin Palace, Sharia, and title holder. Then came Tuskiera, followed by... He wasn't favourite that day either. The favourite was finishing on the outside. He's a great burst of speed. I think Nashua with Holly Doyle, we backed that a couple of times before. We won for us in France one time, didn't it? A couple of years ago. 2022, was it? Yeah, in Chantilly. 19th of June 2022 or when the bus was a minibus it's interesting that Johnny G has it ready to rock out there but do deuce would be the selection there now where are we now we're on to the Shima Classic the betting suggests this is a two-horse race between Ireland and Japan. August Rodin hasn't been seen since he won the Breeders' Cup. We were on him that night. Got a great ride around the, a daring ride around the, the paint. By Ryan of the Moors, hasn't been seen since. Beat up to the mark. Mile and a half on fast ground will definitely suit. Uh, the, couple of times it was beaten before ground was unsuitable it's um, Japanese deep impact Japanese bread Liberty Island I think it's between the two reverse forecast is a, is a, a, a thing but I'm on Liberty Island Liberty Island typical of it, the other horse there we were looking at uh, It was a great middle move in a race. This is her the here. Is Malaki Naya. Then She'll be coming on the outside looks again. For an out from there, followed by Doe Eyes going on is Grand Bernadette. Pippi is there as well. Moving uh, wider out, picking up some ground is Emu. Losing ground on the inside, Cot Shell. Work to do back in the run is Hip Hop Soul and Moriana back to the inside. They swing for home. And striking the front, and here comes Liberty Island. She just goes whoosh. Liberty Island to the 200 meter mark. Leads by two. Running on is Harper. Trying to pick up ground. And here comes Mars Diva Lake. It's Liberty Island. Liberty Island will take out the Grand Tiara from Mars Diva. And in for third tight, either Juro back. To oh, she won the Japanese Oaks last year. That was a, a group one, but she finished off the year in the Japan Cup. Now, that's the super horse there, Equinox. This is her on the rail here. So, she's not out of her depth. And if you take out Equinox out of this race, she'd be the winner. Well, title holder that turns in in second. And then comes Equinox, Liberty Island. With Liberty Island on the outside, is stars on earth. And to do so, all the fancy runners are there. Down and for Lucas Shulman, but she's done running a big race as well. Pantalassa. His run surely must have come to an end. Here's Equinox, the big white face on Equinox, the son of King Star Black. He's in the clear. It's going to be such an easy win indeed into the closing stages. It's Equinox and the Christoph Lanier as a champion jockey, a champion horse up to the line. Equinox wins it from Liberty Island in second stars on earth. And then take it, it's title holder next. Venerous, her in with Venerous. That was Equinox. He was gone to, the, gone to see the Phillies after that race. But she she proved that she's able to be up to that class, and she gets um, she gets five pound as well tomorrow from August Rodan. So I'm taking her. 
and I'll do a reverse forecast where I go through a den. Um, get the five pound, two four year olds. So then we come to the big one. Twenty five million. This was won last year by Ushbet Tesora. And the the top two plus Senior Buscador met recently in the Saudi Cup. Now that's the horse that I mentioned earlier, uh, Saudi Crown. That's it out in front. That was over nine, so back to eight. Senor Buscar beat the re this the reigning champion of this race. I th I think the horse could the, the, be the big danger tomorrow. To I, I give you my selection in a second is Dermot Satagak Satagake. That that one at the track hosed up last year and they weren't too busy on it there. I think this has been the target all along. Uh, Newgate is over from Santa Anita after winning the. Um, the Hollywood or the that handicap that Frankie is on it. Laurel River was very impressive at a mile that previously had ran over six and got beaten. Um, it ran very well in America prior to that. So the trip, I thought I thought that I should go for the other race, the mile race with the wizard, but we're confident enough to take on a few of these. So that with four places there, that could be an all. I'll write each way play for anyone that wants an outsider, Laurel River. Um it should be in the States with Bob Bafford. Grand over six. The last time is very impressive. It absolutely hosed up and they're going again at a, a, for an extra two furlongs so but I'm I'm on the the real story horse of the race. Cabercan. This was bought for twelve thousand dollars. They brought it to Russia, Kazakhstan. And they sent it over here. It's with a, a good trainer in uh, Doug Watson. Pat Dobbs is riding. But I came over and I won a, a handicap in uh, January. Won it impressively by four. It's only a, it's only a four year old, isn't it? Yeah. But it's by California Chrome. He was a monster on the, on the goo as well. But this was it here winning the group one in uh, in January. Out wide was Clapton, followed there by next in turn, working along there, Mimi Kakushi, just That's attached the at the middle. moment from his first group, being pushed along with Celtic Prince. Then came Military Law from Atletico Big Alcano and Everfast. So two groups of runners make their way past the 750 and Walk of Stars leads them at good sections. Kabir Khan up into second. First Constitution, the first to be scrubbed along here. Franz Strauss makes a looping run. Clapton starting to loom into the race. Des Wisdom was next, followed there by Made in Dubai, who's now dropping away here. Best of the rest was Military Law, Atletico El Colano still within striking distance as they make their way into the straight here in the El Maktoum Challenge. And it is Kabir Khan up on the outside here of Walker Stars, who starts to lengthen now. Clapton with the job to chase down the Russian. Then came on the inside, working up into it, Franz Strauss, Desert Wisdom, fighting for minor placings here, though. But the Kazakhstani, the Russian, he's off. Kabir Khan, he has got the El Maktoum Challenge zone up here. Kabir Khan continues his undefeated streak here in the Middle East. Wins by five lengths. Franz Strauss second, photo third, Desert Wisdom, and also Clapton. It was tight. Walk of Stars was next. Followed there uh, over in six by Military Law. Then came uh, Mimi Kaku. It was at his ease there winning that race. Um, it was a grade one, or a group one, whichever you want to call it. Um, and uh, that Clapton was in it. He's an outsider tomorrow. Um, but the, he was effortless in his, in his long stride coming around the turn. And he got into position and 
if he gets away from them tomorrow, uh, he could be hard pegged back. You could see the other ones now. It took them forever to get to uh, that Saudi crown. And Saudi crown ran out of steam. This horse won't run out of steam if he's in that position coming up the stretch. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So I don't know. Sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it middling and sometimes you get it wrong. So that's what I was doing all evening now. Trying to get a few for tomorrow. So. So we won't be interested in that and anything. Uh, you have the there's a uh, national hunt and there's flat and uh, hopefully it's it's uh, a cross for everybody. So anyway, I'm off to uh, Belfast for the next three nights. I'm not picking up the people until Sunday. Staying in a uh, hotel near the middle of town. Uh, it's a five star hotel actually. And then on to Dublin, Tuesday night. On to Blarney, Wednesday night. On to Innes, Thursday night. And on to Trim, in the Royal County, on Friday night. And I'm dropping them to the airport on sat Saturday. I got a phone number for them today and I just checked it. I see they're from Louisville. So I hope they're racing people that I might be able to get the Grand National in on Monday. It's on at five o'clock. I messed up my dates because I always go to the Grand National, the Irish Grand National every year. And uh, when I had said yes, I couldn't say no too handy. So uh, I'm going to miss out on that this year. So hopefully if they're racing people, I might be able to watch the race with me on Monday. Uh, bash the bookies over and out.